What's up, everyone? In today's video, I'm going to give you a tour into our podcast studio so that you guys can see what our workflow is like for creating content. My name is Chris Krueger, and I produce the Rockpile Report podcast. The Rockpile Report, the pettiest, hardest drinking bills podcast. I've been doing this podcast with my friend Drew Gear for over nine years. We started out as audio only, recording in Drew's old apartment, then in my apartment. When I got married, we converted an empty room in my house to be the recording space of our podcast. The idea of the podcast is having a professional studio show look while what's being said is highly unprofessional. We record in a 16 by 10 room. My wife and I handled putting up the drywall and insulation in the room. Drew and I purchased and installed this LED sign that we got from Buffalo Brew Fab. Comes with a remote, has the ability to change colors. Buffalo Brew Fab knocked it out of the park with it. If you need a sign for your recording space, visit Buffalo Brew Fab. Link down in the description. We currently have foam panels covering these two walls, which is the foundation of the house. And at some point, we will upgrade this with a false wall to make the studio look more modern. And when you're building a podcast studio on a budget, you're going to have to do a little bit of light construction. We got butcher block from Home Depot, drew sanded and stained the wood. And with some table legs we purchased from Amazon, our studio table comes in at around $150. We drilled two holes in the table so that we can run our XLR cables to have somewhat of a clean look while on camera. For the lighting, we have six New Ear 480 LED lights that run 3200 to 5600 Kelvin. We have them mounted to the ceiling. When we started building this room, I borrowed a paint sprayer and painted the ceiling and foundation side of the walls black. And then I had an electrical outlet installed in the ceiling to power the lights. It allows us to dial in the amount of white and yellow light we need so that we're not relying on the cameras to do all of the work. Speaking of the cameras, we have a four camera setup. We have two Canon M50 cameras, each with Sigma 30 millimeter 1.4 aperture lenses. If you're looking to getting cameras for your setup to create content, I would recommend going in a different direction. The problem with the M50s are that it has an automatic shutoff at 30 minutes, as well as having to film in manual focus. Filming with autofocus will leave the square box on the screen, and you can't get rid of it. However, the automatic shutoff does have a workaround. You have to download the Canon EOS utility software, plug the camera into the computer, and run the EOS software, to bypass the auto shutoff. Our other two cameras, I would recommend purchasing for creating content, the Sony A5100. We have two of them. One still has the kit lens it came with. The other is upgraded with a Sigma 16 millimeter, 1.4 aperture lens. These Sonys are excellent. You don't have to do really much for a setup. It's really plug in and go. Just adjust your ISO and aperture accordingly. All of our cameras were purchased on Mercari or eBay. And the cost of the camera setup with the lens upgrade run about seven to $800 per camera. As far as the audio, the oldest piece of equipment that we have, a Behringer Xenix mixer. I purchased it in 2015 for about $100. Most podcasts use the Rodecaster Pro mixer, but at a $600 price point, it's not our highest priority for replacement. While the Rodecaster Pro is, or at least from what I've heard and read, it's a plug-in and go kind of mixer. While the Behringer mixer that we use, we still have to adjust our highs, mids, and lows to get the best sound quality. And the microphones we use are the Rolls-Royce of microphones, the Shure SM7B. They really are worth the $400 price tag, they got to be paired with a cloud lifter to give these mics a little bit of life to them. Our mics are held by these Gator Framework table stands. We also have boom arms from Inagear, which is what I'm currently using. These Inagear boom arms come in at $40, and I've used more expensive boom arms that have worse quality than, than this Inagear arm. If you're in the market for a boom arm, 
These gears are very sturdy, work great to adjust the mic to any angle that you want. Since we try to project this podcast as professional looking as we can make it, the headphones we use are the Shure SE215 Pro Wired Earbuds. They offer a clean look while on camera and are some of the most comfortable headphones I've ever used. Some of you may not know this, but I have a hearing loss in my right ear. My right ear canal is about double the size of my left, so I'm very picky when it comes to the headphones I use, whether it's here in the studio, at work, or when I'm just mowing the lawn. These Shure headphones are by far the best headphones we've had in the studio. We do have some larger cans for guests that come in, the Tascam TH02s. They run about $20. They're okay. I just prefer the Shure headphones, which run in at about $100. We also have a tablet in our podcast setup. I have an Amazon Fire tablet that I got for about $100. I rarely take it out of the studio. I have a soundboard app on here called Soundit. I simply connect the tablet to the mixer. This allows me to add sound files to play, whether it's a post-game comment from Sean McDermott or Josh Allen, or even a drop on the show like our hero and zero of the game. And that's the national media. You folks fell on your face. You get an F minus in my book. Now, Chris, we had a back and forth pre, uh, pre-show pre about how you want to handle this. That's done in real time with the Sounded app on my Amazon tablet. I have a three-monitor system for my computer. One of the monitors I have connected to an HDMI splitter. That mirrors one of my monitors to another monitor that faces Drew. The setup is really useful for Drew as a host. It allows for me to search for information that he needs, put it up on a screen that he can see, so he's not opening another tab on his laptop that pulls him away from his show notes. On to the actual production process of the show, all of the cameras are plugged into the ATEM Mini Pro by Blackmagic Design. This is an awesome piece of equipment to get for video podcasting, Four HDMI ports for all of our cameras. It allows us to go live on YouTube whenever we need to go live. A USB-C port to house a SSD drive to record shows and a copy of live streams for post-show editing. The audio is recorded separately from the video into one of the oldest recording programs known to man, Cool Edit Pro. Yes, I know it's old. It's also free. I'm not one to be shelling out money on a monthly or yearly basis to have Adobe Audition, which is what Cool Edit Pro is. We do run a backup program, Audacity, in case we run into issues with Cool Edit Pro, which has happened in the past. Once all of our audio is mastered, we take the video and audio and dump it into DaVinci Resolve. There's a free version of DaVinci to download and use. I did get the full program as a gift, and I'm currently learning it to make our shows better from a production standpoint. Once I finish editing the videos, I upload them to YouTube for release at a reasonable hour. I'll take the audio, import it into the queue on our audio hosting site, megaphone.fm. From there, Drew will write out the show title and show description, and that goes out to all major podcast platforms. That's our studio. Hopefully this video gave you ideas for your own studio to create content. You can find our podcast right here on YouTube. Audio versions of the show can be found on any podcast platform. Connect with us on Twitter at Rockpile Report. We're also on Instagram at The Rockpile Report. And you can always email us at therockpilereport at gmail.com.